Call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The time is now 6 p.m. If you would please stand as Mr. Williams leads us in the invocation and Mr. Husbands in the Pledges of Allegiance. Thank you, President Sanders. Yeah. As customary in our schools, if you will, please pause with me for a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Please join me in honoring our nation's flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And our state flag, honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams, Mr. Husbands. Item 2A, Awards and Recognition, Special District Recognition. Dr. Stockton. I'm going to ask Mr. Colshan, who's principal of Woodlands High School, to come introduce our coach and our recipient. Dr. Stockton, Mr. Sanders, member of the, members of the board, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight to recognize a very outstanding young man and his coach. Uh, they have both done an outstanding job in representing our school and our district at the state level. So at this time, I'd like to introduce our head powerlifting coach, Craig Smith, who will introduce Mitchell Fountain. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, it's a great privilege to be able to get powerlifting some recognition. Um, athletes like Mitchell don't come along very often in any sport, whatever you coach. Uh, his hard work has really paid off, his dedication. Uh, you won't find too many athletes in their craft that are you know, as dedicated as Mitchell. Mitchell was a state champion this year. Uh, he was also a state champion last year. He's the first two-time state champion in our school's history. Um, he's a three-time state qualifier, the first time in our school history also. Um, he broke uh, the state, uh, the regional squat record this year with the 740-pound squat in the 220-pound weight class. Uh, he holds six different school records. He's won 11 uh, meets during his career. He's a four-year letterman. 
Uh, at the state meet this year, he broke the total weight record with an 1865 total. Uh, that he beat the record by over 100 pounds, and that record was over 20 years old wow. that he broke. Uh, his deadlift, he had a 735-pound deadlift. Uh, that broke the state record. It was the heaviest deadlift from any division and any weight class in state meet history. Uh, so uh, two-time state champion, uh, Mitchell Fountain. <laughs> A little space there. <laughs> uh, Hercules, um, I mean Mitchell, on behalf of Dr. Stockton and the Board of Trustees, we want to congratulate you for the many, many achievements you've you've done in the sport of weightlifting. Great job, outstanding. Oh, I'm right there. <laughs> okay. We appreciate all you do, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Tom. Congratulations. Good job, Coach. Let's see you again. We're very proud of you. Thank you for all you Great job, Good job. Yeah. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Good job, Coach. Yeah, That's serious. I got carries a lot of weight. <laughs> Next item on our agenda is 2B, Citizens Participation. Ms. Ferris, is anyone registered to address the board? All right, we'll continue on. <clears throat> it's okay with the board. I'd like to move item 9A and 9B up. I believe I already checked. No one had any. Thanks. So we'll move to item 9A, Human Resources, naming of Principal Pete Junior High School. Dr. Stockton. Well, we're off to a powerful start tonight, so we'll keep it going with some powerful recommendations. The first recommendation I want to make is for the principal of Pete Junior High School. And I'd like to recommend Rotasha Smith, who's the associate principal at Conroe High School. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. Dr. Stockton, President Sanders, and members of the board, thank you so much for the opportunity to serve as principal of Pete Junior High. I'm honored to work in a district that has such strong leadership who truly seek what's best for all students. There are a few people I would like to thank this evening who have helped me so far in my professional career. Dr. Stockton and Dr. Hines, thank you for the knowledge you lead with and the example that you set for all of us here in Conroe ISD. Dr. Jeff Stickler, Ms. Gail Drummond, and my Conroe High School administrative team, thank you for your kind words and support over the years. Dr. Weatherly, I know you've only been at Conroe High School for a few months, but I've learned a lot and I thank you for that. Last but certainly not least, I would like to thank Dr. Curtis Newell, who I can't thank enough for molding me into the administrator that I am today. Lastly, I surely wouldn't be here without the love and support of my family. Here with, me, here with me this evening are my wonderful husband, Thomas Smith. Our son, CISD graduate class of 2028, Ross. <laughs> my mom, Brenda Bowden. My aunt, Janice Scott. My cousin, Delicia, and her daughter, Calicia. Thank you again, and I look forward to being a Pete Cub and together with students, parents, and staff continuing on the path of academic excellence. Thank you. All right, now item 9B, Human Resources Naming of Principal Hawk Academic Alternative High School. Dr. Stockton. I am very pleased to recommend Paula Nicolini to you. Paula is a assistant principal at the ninth grade campus at Conroe High School. So move. Second. 
We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor? The motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve at Hawk as principal. Um, I have some role models here that I wanted to thank also. Dr. Stockton for being my example of a servant leader. I would like to thank Mr. Galindo, Ms. Drummond, and Mr. Hines for sharing their wisdom and their educational experience with me and answering every question I come up with. I want to thank Dr. Noel for inviting me into the CISD family and guiding me along as a new administrator. And I'd like to thank my mentor, uh, Mr. Stickler, and also um, Dr. Sharples for being so encouraging. Hawk is a award-winning school, and I'm super excited and pleased to be joining their staff. And I'd like to introduce, I brought one of my family members along, um, Erica Nicolini, could you stand up? Erica is representing. <laughs> Erica is representing her two brothers, her two sisters, and my two grandbabies that live three hours away, so they could not make it on a Tuesday night, so she has a big load on her shoulders. But anyways, I'm super excited. I'm super honored. This is my passion. This is something I wanted more than anything, and I, I thank everyone for allowing me to pursue this. Thank you very much. All of you that came for those two announcements, you're free to leave. You're welcome to stay. Thank you for coming. All right, next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Mr. Mr. President, um, I move the adoption of the consent agenda with uh, the uh, including the updated human resource report as, as uh, included in our package. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? A second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Not. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries. <clears throat> Item 4A, Curriculum and Instruction, 2014-2015 Community and Student Engagement. Dr. Stockton. I'd like to invite Dr. Hines and Mr. Kelly to come make that presentation. Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, it is a pleasure for um, me to be here this evening with William Kelly, our coordinator of assessment and evaluation, to share with you some information about the community and student engagement uh, rating system that was stipulated in the uh, House Bill 5 that passed in the last session. And so tonight we'd like to just uh, share a little bit of information about those, uh, those areas. Uh, House Bill 5 asked that the districts or actually requires us to annually evaluate uh, the district and campus performance and assign a report and report a rating of exemplary, recognized, acceptable, or unacceptable for overall and for each of the individual factors that they have prescribed. And uh, you may remember those terms in our last accountability. That's how we they use those terms. So they just took that language and applied it to this new system. And they've given us nine areas of which uh, the district will uh, have to assess or evaluate itself on compliance um, and the, uh, the, the rest of the scores will come from a compilation 
of the campus scores. And so the areas that are going to be rated include fine arts, <coughs> wellness and physical education, community and parental involvement, which includes things like opportunities for parents to assist students in preparing for assessments or parents to volunteer like the watchdogs, you've seen those signs up, uh, tutoring programs, uh, mentoring opportunities, uh, community service projects for our students. Uh, another area is 21st century workforce development. Another, lang another is second language acquisition uh, program. And then the digital learning environment, dropout prevention strategies, education programs for the gifted and talented, and then <clears throat> lastly, compliance with statutory reporting and policy requirements. I'm going to turn it over to William. <clears throat> the statute required us to establish a local committee to come up with the criteria that we're going to judge ourselves on these in these programs. And I believe you were provided beforehand a copy of all the criteria that our committee came up with. The state purposefully is providing little to no guidance on how to do this. They really want it to be a locally developed self-assessment of our programs. And so we formed that committee and district representatives went to region six and talked to what other districts were doing and shared some ideas and um, got a little bit of <coughs> brainstorming guidance from region six. But again, even region six can't tell us what criteria to use. So we came back, we created a district-wide committee, and that committee came up with some criteria. Then we, we expanded the criteria, the committee included principals. We took, those, we took those criteria to the district level planning committee that includes community members, parents, got their feedback, came back, revised and refined those criteria multiple times. And we've now taken what we finally came up with and we put it into our view it system, our computer system that everyone in the district can log into for principals to be able to access and they're going to be the ones to determine if their campus meets those criteria. When we got started, because it's all on us, we had to come up with what do we believe about this system? What are we going to do with this freedom we've been giving? So the first thing we all agreed to was we we're going to use this to first recognize the great things that we do in CISD. So we want to recognize the programs and practices that work well in all nine of those programs. We also didn't want to do a one size fits all. So the criteria we came up with are flexible and broad enough that our different campuses who handle things different ways could still uh, meet those criteria. We also did not want to just duplicate what the state already does. You can see there's a whole list of acronyms that the state already gives us ratings on. So we didn't want to just duplicate that and use the same things that they're doing. We really wanted to make it unique for us. So we started with what are our district goals and what do we think a good fine arts program looks like? What do we think GT programs should look like and develop criteria specific to CISD? We also realized as we were going that we need a criteria that can actually be measured. So if someone said, how do you know you're good at that? We can say, well, because of this actual concrete measurable, um, that would also allow us to show that we're making progress towards those goals. We also were very careful because this came out really in the middle of this year. And we knew that the ratings would be done at the end of the year. So we were very careful that we did not want to penalize a campus after the game had been played. We didn't want to suddenly, well, they didn't know they were going to be rated on that at the beginning of the year. So this is a flexible system, and each year we can change and raise the expectations for our campuses. But this very first year, we knew that we were going in after the year was already over. So that's why we're planning on phasing in the standards and raising them to improve those programs. So it's a work in progress, and every year it'll be continued to be revised and reached towards those goals. So what you see on your screen is really what a principal will see now. We've taken those criteria, we've put them in online, and the principal, this is the example you're looking at is a high school. The high school would go in and say, I'm going to rate myself on community and student involvement. 
These are the 16 criteria that the committee determined for that, and they will select the criteria that apply to their campus. When they're done, they'll hit submit, it'll total, and based on the total points they get, it'll assign a rating of exemplary recognized, acceptable or unacceptable. We'll do this, right now we're doing it really as a practice run, because we want now feedback from every single principal and their campuses. So they're doing it as a practice run, then we'll clear the data, and at the end of the year, they'll go in and actually rate their campuses. When it's done, we have to report it through the PEAMS computer system that report all our data to TEA through. So we actually have to tell TEA, here's what we rated ourselves on, and TEA then puts that now in our accountability system. So this fall, when they give our campus a rating based on star scores and graduation rates, there will be another component, the community and student engagement ratings that were self-reported. Any questions? I have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> so what what measure did you do? Are we going to take as a district that's going to keep people honest about how they report on their campus, especially since it's going to play into the overall rating? That's a really good question. We, with the parent, the principal said, who do we give the data to or the, the paperwork to that shows we do that? And right now, we're, this is our first year, so we're not requiring them to submit all that to me or, or Dr. Hines, but they're aware that all of that has to be based on something mm -hmm. because, because this is an official rating, it could be audited. Mm -hmm. So they can come back and say, prove that you did that. Mm -hmm. And so we're also, when they do those ratings, we're kind of, we're auditing it this first year. So we're looking and seeing, hmm, we know that campus, they really should be a little bit higher. Are they, what is their da the data they're using? So first, right now we're auditing, but we know that Anyone could audit, so the principals are collecting and saving that data at the campus level. We're doing a practice run right now, which is really a great way for us to kind of go, well, wait a second, I think they are doing that. Maybe they're not giving themselves credit for that. Let's go talk about that. Or the opposite is like, you know, maybe we need to go back and see what we don't see. Kind of it being public information, we're going to publish this TA and some parents can be able to look at it and say, hey, wait a second, we don't do that. Or, or we do something that wasn't recorded. And we're going to work with the district or the campus uh, site-based teams to put, put this information together. So there's some built-in accountability in there, mm -hmm. but it's a new system. It's a brand new system, right out of the box. So we're kind of feeling our way through it. You, I mean, you said that uh, that this can can and will be adjusted. Um, and let me let me just phrase this uh, just right. Does that mean? I mean, I can see if we're moving targets that presenting a problem you know drop one add another every year it changes <clears throat> or are we just talking about fine-tuning the basic premises we have I, Do you, is that a fair question it is um, I think because it's our first year we don't know it is likely that next year one of these criteria might not really make sense to stay okay um, our big goal is once we have them to raise Maybe if, if we set the, the bar, the if we set it at 50% for something, raise it to 55 and slowly move it up. Well, you know, I've heard ever since I joined this board and Dr. Stockton, I should say, you know, it, this is about improvement. It's not about a rating, okay? Each individual child, each individual campus, our school district as a whole, it's always been about improvement here. My other concern, much like, you know, maybe guarding the, you know, the fox guarding the hen house, is more about a comparison to other districts. Um, you know, ABC school district here's got, you know, 250 kids and their fine arts program is exemplary. And we've got 6,000 kids. And just because we take a bigger scope and measure improvement and maybe even possibly a bit more honest, okay, we're recognized. But, I mean, if you were to compare the two fine arts programs, it would be, you know, daylight and dark. If you understand, I'm not putting ABC down, but, I mean, no. we are very fortunate and blessed. We know that. So, how did, how is this going to, is there going to be any, inter, is it going to come into play anywhere else besides on our, where did you say it's reported with the rest that's, of our? That's the conversation that we had going into this, because every district gets to choose what criteria they rate themselves on. <laughs> District A, B, C, D may pick one yeah. thing. 
We and won a lot of football games. That's right. We win. And that's what they're good at. And so they say they're exemplary. And so you're right. We're not sure how this is going to play in the public because you really won't be able to compare them in the same way you can compare star scores. That's across the board. And this, so we really don't know. Is this man this mandated by the state, correct? It is. Mandated by the um, I, I appreciate accountability, and I think this is what we're all referencing here. But it seems like an administrative burden. I mean, just you know, what, what are the action items? What do we hope to gain out of this? I mean, we grade yourself and submit it. Compile the data, submit it in. First of all, it we tried as we were going through this to make this a less burdensome than it could be. On, especially on principals and on our yeah. district staff. It's, it seems it seems just as that, and I apologize for interrupting, it seems just like we're, again, burdening our principals to do more administrative things as opposed to taking care of campus on issues. And, and then they have to, I mean, the, the, all the principals are very cautious of how they're viewed uh, from yeah. district-wide level and the community uh, level as well. And, you, I mean, you, you come on, degrade you grade yourself. I mean, you know, when I graded myself in, in, in elementary, I always made an A. I was just that great of a student. So, and, and I'll say that to be, not to be facetious, but it just seems to me that we're asking them to do something that's contradict, not contradictory, but their interest is not in line with what we're. I believe one of our, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I was going to say the key here is we're not asking them to do anything. I agree. Senate Bill 5, it's kind of like sometimes we get to vote on things that if we, we don't money. vote on, we don't have any more state funding or something like that. I, you know, okay, so why do we vote on that? But anyway. Yeah. I, I think we had that conversation. We did not want to burden them with a lot of extra stuff. But we did see this as an opportunity. Since we have to do it, what, what can we make the best of? So what we decided was this can really allow us to, down the road as we raise those standards, guide these programs towards making them the way, as a district, we envision them to look and rewarding the principals who are really pushing that program <clears throat> and improving it. So it is a burden, but we're gonna try and get something positive out of it. Fair enough, and I appreciate you guys trying to make it as less of a hassle to the administration as we possibly can. I know we were mandated by the state to do it and we have to do it. So, okay, that's just a comment from me. No question there. Anyone else? My question is more of a technical nature, but I know it's all point-based, how did you decide the cut between what's considered <laughs> Chris is laughing at me. <laughs> I'm always the nuts and bolts guy. Get an it's like, <laughs> what, what, what makes the exemplary, <laughs> what makes you recognized, and so on and so forth. I'm just trying to understand we, the nuts and the bolts. Truly, we, we played with it, uh, as, as William mentioned. We, we envisioned this being a system where we can, kind of like similar with the test scores, when the test first came out, we said this is passing and then we'll raise the bar a little bit and raise the bar. And that's really how we looked at it. And so we tried to deal with a number that we thought was fair and achievable. And we have, we have outstanding schools with outstanding leadership and they really do have most of these components. As William said, it's a great opportunity sometimes to, for us to maybe put down someplace you know that yes we do this and uh, and give points for it. so we we do have the ability to up the points over time and we just settled with areas that we, okay. we set the bar where we are okay knowing that's that fair. we'll be able to move to where we want to be. And, and really with the game almost over by the time we implement right. this it yeah. just didn't seem fair yes sir. yes uh you talked about some uh, elements may drop off and others but prior to the beginning of the year they're going to know what those elements are they're going to be nice Right down that year, correct? But they only choose those that are applicable to their, their campus. If that's if I, Did I hear that correctly? You did. The way we even set up the computer program is you say you're an elementary, you only see elementary criteria. You're customized based on, we didn't put criteria that wouldn't apply to that campus. We okay. tried to customize it based on. So there's a further breakdown of it yes. based on that elementary school, not just ele all elementary schools. No, it's all elementary. Okay. It's all elementary. There are some differences in what people call things. There are some differences, but a lot, there are a lot of similarities too. And that's one of the things that I think this also enables us to do is create some common language. But there is a, still that very subjective nature of some of those some of questions. Right? Okay. Well, I really appreciate the work you guys put into that because I can see that it could really provide some sort of roadmap for campuses that are struggling to engage in the community. So I think this could really be um, important to those campuses. So I think it's great. Thank you. 
Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, the other question I have is, is uh, and I, I agree with Ms. Powell, I applaud all the work you've done. It's, it's great. Um, the question I had was, the group, the local group that got together, was there consent, consensus? I, I assume there was in coming up with the criteria. Was there any dissent? Any, I mean, was it, did everybody agree? Or were there a few kind of saying, no, oh, I'm not sure about this one? I mean, I'm Actually, just trying to get an idea because sure. I'm sure you probably had a whole bucket full of ideas and then you had to funnel them down into the what you came up with the final criteria. There were some really great conversations. Once we set out those guiding principles, uh, people would throw out all sorts of, what is your idea of a great GT program? What's your idea? Throw them all out. And then some really good conversations came. Not a lot of disagreement, but a lot of where do we draw the line? What What is a criteria that really that the principal has some control over on their campus so they can guide their campus towards that? And some things are just the law. And so we we took those off and that just made sense we wanted to leave it things that are controllable that makes sense work. and that, and that's really where i was headed because if if the principals are the ones having to complete this information but it's not within their purview of control it, it just seems almost pointless. yeah counterintuitive to do that right. okay thank you so much anyone else thank you john all right thank you thank you Good job, all right Item 4B, TEA Technology Lending Program Grant, Dr. Stock. Dr. Hines, will you present this grant, please? Yes, sir. Uh, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, this evening, um, I'm here to request permission to uh, apply for the Texas Education Agency Technology Lending Program Grant. Uh, this is a, a grant that if we are granted permission and if we are awarded would be up to $100,000 for the purpose to help schools increase student access to electronic and web-based instructional materials. And the, the brief summary of what our proposal is is that uh, we wanted to target one school where we could kind of launch this and, and run it. There's a lot of reporting that would go with it if we were selected. And so uh, we wanted to target identified seventh grade math students at Washington Junior High who would benefit from increased access to one of our online math uh, programs for uh, tutoring and for adding value. Uh, this is a two-year grant if we were awarded, and the grants are, are competitive. There will only be 13 awarded statewide, and there are no matching funds required, so I'm asking permission to apply. So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor and all those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Item 5A, Administration GMP Vogel Intermediate Classroom Additions, Crier and Tough Life Cycle Improvements. Dr. Shaw. Mr. Foster, please come and present uh, that item and the following items after that. President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure to bring forward for your approval tonight. Um, several projects, as Dr. Stockton just mentioned. Um, so we're going to try to go through them as succinctly as we can. First is the uh, guaranteed maximum price proposal, or guaranteed maximum price proposal for Vogel Intermediate Classroom Additions, Crier and Tough Life Cycle Improvements. Requests for proposals for this project were advertised by uh, Conroe ISD, by my department, in the Houston Chronicle, in the Conroe Courier, uh, and in several plan rooms around the area. For competitive seal proposals to be received by our construction manager, GTT. And GTT was selected at a prior board meeting and approved as a construction manager for this project based on their prior experience with projects, uh, specifically a project that is, this is a, not a mirror image of, but we've done this, this type of project on other schools before. And, and managing projects uh, like the life cycle improvements at Cryer and Tough. Uh, they have experience with us doing this work. The addition at Vogel uh, will increase capacity and address some site work issues and add a, a, a fire access lane. The, the building addition grows the building big enough. The uh, city of Oak Ridge North is now requiring additional fire lane access around that building. The life cycle improvements at Cryer and Tuff were, were, will replace worn flooring, uh, repaint the walls, <coughs> as well as other minor repairs as, they, as, the, as we uncover them going around that building. GTT Inc. Uh, is proposing a guaranteed max maximum price in the amount of $3,990,939 uh, 
and the funds for this project are allocated from the 2008 bond referendum. At this time, I request your approval. So move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or questions? No question. Uh, what are we adding at Vogel? Many. This this building is adding eight classrooms, um, and um, that's the the classroom addition. Uh, there's no other additions associated with it, but there are the other major item is the the site work to allow the fire lane, fire lane around the building, which is also going to require us to clear a little bit of additional land between Vogel and the maintenance department, so we don't reduce the play area for that facility. Thank you. And my question, Mr. Foster, was about the the flooring and the life cycle improvements. What kind of life are we getting out of those? Um, I'm going to be off by the dates of a year or two, but Cryer and Tuff, I believe Cryer uh, was constructed in 2002. Uh, Tuff was opened in 2001. So those floors are 12 or 13 years old. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, specifically in those, we're replacing the, uh, the vinyl tile that's in the classrooms, uh, which had about a 10 year lifespan. Uh, and we're adding carpet in those classrooms, which is the standard that we've adopted in the you know in the last eight ten years. Okay. And is is that the square where you mess up a square, you replace that square, not the whole room? Uh, the the vinyl tiles are would be the twelve inch by twelve inch squares. We are with these projects um, still working through the details of the carpet going in, but the carpet will either be uh, a six foot rolled good, uh, like we would see in a typical elementary school, or a carpet tile depending on how those contracts are negotiated at the, at the subcontractor level. Which is more expensive, the, the carpet tiles or the rolled product? Relative to the overall square foot price, uh, they're pretty close. They're within a dollar or so per square foot of each other. So tell me why you would go, I, I literally don't know, why would you go with the rolled product over the squares where if you get a stain, you can replace one? Well, the, uh, the, the rolled product, uh, the roll product we're entertaining for these campuses actually has a lifetime warranty, which is currently not offered in a, in a carpet tile product. It also has um, a fully welded assembly, meaning it's not impervious to, uh, to, so if you spill something on it, it doesn't get under the carpet and stay on the concrete. It stays in the carpet fibers where it can be easily cleaned. The carpet tiles are inherently, they're, they're seamed together. There's over 900 linear feet uh -huh. of of seams in a typical classroom with yeah. carpet tile. Now the, the trade-off is, is our maintenance department can't just pluck one tile up and put one tile down, sure. but the other, uh, the other end of that is it has a lifetime warranty, so it's, we shouldn't be involved in plucking pieces out and putting pieces down. And, and lifetime warranty meaning? For the, I, for the, as long as we own that building, mm -hmm. uh, the manufacturer is standing behind the color fastness, color fastness fraying, and the overall wear of that carpet. So anytime in the lifetime of that building, if that carpet wears out, they should be on the hook to replace it. Great. Very good. All right. Any other questions? All right. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. I like lifetime over 10 right. years. And B is multi-campus renovations. Anderson, Bush, David, Galatis, Easinger, Powell, and Conroe High School. Again, it's my pleasure to bring forward for your approval a guaranteed maximum price proposal for multi-campus <coughs> renovations. Specifically, renovations at Anderson, Bush, Gladys, Giesinger, Powell, and David, and, and there's a small project at Connor High School. Again, uh, requests for proposals were advertised by my department and the Houston Chronicle and Connor Courier and area plan rooms for competitive seal proposals to be received by GTT, uh, the CM that was selected for this project, again, because of their experience on projects of this size and complexity with <laughs> us specifically, Connor ISD. The renovations to Anderson, Bush, Galatis, David, Giesinger, and Powell consist of replacing the skylights. Uh, that particular floor plan has a, has a very large skylight over the library and, and the uh, gym portions of the building, as well as some skylights down the, the finger hallways in each of the grade levels. Uh, the project we're proposing removes those skylights, which are at the end of their serviceable life. I have a, a survey of the condition of each of them, and they, they no longer we no longer have the ability to refinish them. So at this point, we're going to remove them in favor of replacing it with an actual roof structure, uh, which increases safety for our technicians that work on the roof. If they were to accidentally step on it, they won't fall through. It eliminates the inherent problems with skylights, which are leaks and other, other issues. 
we are having to do some lighting improvements on the interior of the building because we will be uh, eliminating all the sunlight that used to come through the skylights, which by virtue of their age had been reduced by about 85% anyway. So we should be able to improve the lighting conditions within the building uh, with this project. In addition to that, these campuses also over time, many of them are in the Woodlands and Conroe, uh, trees have grown up around them significantly. So the uh, part of this project is also to upgrade the parking lot lighting to uh, increase the lighting in the parking lot so when teachers or organizations leave after hours, they leave in a fully lit pathway that is uh, no longer has dark spots in it. Funds for this project are allocated in the 2008 bond referendum. The work at Connor High School is to construct a covered batting facility for the baseball team. And this, the funds are support, funds for that project are supported with contributions from the Conroe High School Baseball Booster Club. GTT uh, has offered a proposal, guaranteeing maximum price proposal in the amount of $3,272,689. This time I ask for your approval. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or questions? If not, all those in favor? Motion carries. <clears throat> All right, next is GMP Oak Ridge High School ninth grade additions. Again, it's my pleasure to bring for your <laughs> approval a guaranteed maximum price proposal for the uh, campus additions at the Oak Ridge ninth grade campus. Requests for proposals for this project were advertised again by my department in the Houston Chronicle and Conroe Courier and area plan rooms for competitive seal proposals to be received by our construction manager, Duratech. Duratech was selected at a prior board meeting as our CM due to their experience with Conroe ISD on projects of this size and complexity. The additions to the Oak Ridge ninth grade campus will increase capacity at Oak Ridge, not only for students, but also for parking capacity and stacking uh, stacking lanes to get cars off the roadway. In addition to the work at the Oak Ridge ninth grade campus building, uh, we are also rebuilding the Oak Ridge ninth grade track. Uh, that track has reached the end of its usable life uh, and our determination is it needs to be rebuilt from the, uh, basically from the substrate all the way to the rubber track surface. Also, to go with the track of uh, rebuilding or track maintenance projects, which are our typical life cycle projects we've talked to you about this time of the year anyway. Uh, the track maintenance at York Junior High, the Woodlands ninth grade campus as well. What we're also taking on this year that we uh, haven't done in the last few years is tennis court maintenance uh, to resurface the tennis court. So we're starting with, uh, at this year, starting with resurfacing Candy Creek High School's tennis courts. Funding for the Oak Ridge ninth grade campus project and the uh, track uh, life cycle improvements uh, is allocated in the transition plan that was discussed in October and funds for this project should come from the fund balance. Duratec proposes a GMP in the amount of $13,811,940 and at this time I seek your approval. So moved. Second. There's a motion and second. Is there any discussion or questions? I have one. Uh, how, old is, how old is York Junior High? Is it York, York. seven years? York Junior High? Since uh, we converted the, you know. Oh. Yes, yeah, so York Junior High opened in 2009, I believe, was when it, or eight. Is that right, Ian? Is, so, it, is there any concern track maintenance at York Junior High is the only reason I'm asking the question. Uh, well, I'm, no, the, I'm off of it just as quick as I'm on it. It's no, just as long as I'm not buying something I already paid for. No, the track maintenance of this track is merely restriping what's already there. The, the track service is in good shape. Thank you. We're just freshening it up to make it look pretty. And the difference in the, uh, just want to point out too, this is coming from fund balance, which means we're basically getting cash out of our checking account for it. That's actually outside my department. But yeah. <laughs> that's, that's correct, right? <laughs> yeah, we're, Cops. We're that's right. All right. That's I just good. want to make sure that's clear. No debt. No debt. <laughs> All right. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor and all those opposed? And the motion carries. All right. And then item D is Oak Ridge School Road Project. All right. At the risk of repeating myself. <clears throat> it is my pleasure to bring for your approval at this time and guarantee maximum price proposal for what we call the Oak Ridge School Road Project. 
Again, the request for proposals mm. for this project were advertised by my department and the Houston Chronicle, the Conroe Courier, and Area Plan Rooms for competitive sealed proposals to be received by our construction manager, Dinko Incorporated. Dinko was selected and then approved uh, at a prior board meeting as construction manager for this project specifically because of their expertise corporately from constructing roadway projects, not only for the, the state and the highways, but for school districts. They've executed projects similar to this for other school districts in Texas, in the Gulf Coast, so close to home, basically. This work will add a left turn or a dedicated turn lane for the full length of Oak Ridge School Road, which as we we know we anticipate should alleviate some of the traffic concerns that happen if you ever happen to be on Oak Ridge School Road during any of the class transitions or any of the, uh, the pickup drop off uh, times during the day. Uh, this will also increase the parking for Oak Ridge High School. Uh, it'll reconfigure parking access um, off at, at Hauser Elementary as well to get some of Hauser Elementary's traffic off of Oak Ridge School Road and place it onto Woodson Road. Uh, so part of the Hauser project is to actually also increase stacking lanes so we can get our traffic off of a public street onto our property. This also includes work at Burnham Woods Elementary, uh, which is a similar project reconfiguring their uh, stacking for their parent pickup and drop off. And that's working in conjunction with the local developer who's actually expanding Burnham Woods Drive uh, starting this summer. Uh, so we're reconfiguring our, our driveway setup so that we'll uh, work with their, their development on, on Burnham Woods Drive. Also, this includes some paving improvements for the Dean Sadler Administration Building. <coughs> Dean Co. Incorporated proposes a GNP amount of $6,503,741. And the budget uh, or the funds for this project are allocated in the 2008 bond referendum. At this time, I seek your approval. I move. Second. There's a motion and second. Is there any discussion or comments? Questions? Not. All those in favor? <clears throat> Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Finally, item, item 5E is the bond referendum update. If it's your pleasure, Mr. Floss, <laughs> this item. President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it is again my pleasure to speak to you this evening. Um, I want to give you an update about our bond fund, our projects in progress that are currently funded by the 2008 bond referendum. Starting with Charlie L. Patterson Elementary School, uh, this project is about 99% complete. It is uh, scheduled for us to take over control of the building this month. They are currently working on the interior of what we consider a punch list where the uh, contractor and the design team are working through picking apart the details, making sure it meets our standards. The work at this campus is mainly on the exterior of the building now. You probably noticed there's a, a utility pole we're waiting for energy to move so we can finish our roadway project. Um, there's some permitting issues with TxDOT that are being resolved as we speak uh, so we can complete the roadway uh, and open that up to the, for public use. <clears throat> the landscape for that job that project has been uh, finally decided and approved with the city of Conroe, so we're about to embark installing the planning on the outside of that, that building. At Jeannie Stewart Elementary School, again, it is, as with Patterson, approximately 99% complete. The interior of that building is in the same shape as Patterson as far as punch list, working the contractors are working through, cleaning up the finer details. The work there is on the exterior of the building. <coughs> where if, <coughs> if you'll recall the developer changed the road layout around us so it delayed our exterior construction a little bit so again the uh, there's some details working on the exterior of that building now but it is uh, essentially fit for our use on the interior at this time yeah, i do want to say the developer um, if you haven't been there they've they've put another two-lane uh, road in there past our school so that's going to be very helpful to us there you go so they show the van you you're getting ready for the next picture? We don't have the answer. <laughs> the uh, Knox Junior High project is progressing uh, as scheduled. We just completed, or this week are completing what we consider phase four. Uh, we walked through with the maintenance department on Monday, yesterday. Uh, so they're completing those details, covering the ceilings up in phase four. Phase five will begin in earnest this weekend. How many phases are there? There are 12, I believe. 
uh, as, we're, as we're working through that building. So now when we open, when school's out and the, and the students leave us, uh, we will start phases 7 through 12, more, more or less all, all at one time. Uh, in addition to that, the work at uh, McCullough Junior High that's associated with this is, is progressing well. We are now waiting on the students to leave us for the summer so we can get into Bach Auditorium and uh, re, uh, revamp the lighting in the, in the house of uh, Bach, Bach Auditorium. The chillers at Oak Ridge uh, High School are in. We're working through some details with maintenance on the control sequences so that they operate at their peak efficiency. And the uh, chillers and uh, boiler upgrades at Green Creek High School are scheduled for the summer. And we're currently working with the contractor to schedule around ROTC activities at Cane Creek High School for the summer. But that project is on schedule and working exactly as we've had it planned. And that is the bond projects that are currently in progress. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Next item on the agenda is Executive session. Six A. No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I just boy, oh, I jumped all over that. One, didn't I? All right. Adam, that's why y'all are here to keep me in line. <laughs> Item six A is business and finance approve the 2014-2015 teacher hiring schedule. Dr. Stock. Mr. Cox, will you come and present that item, please? President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. I recommend that the Board of Trustees approve the 2014-2015 teacher hiring schedule. CISD administration believes that early approval of the teacher salary schedule will improve teacher recruitment and retention. This proposal was recommended by the TASB Compensation Group. Administration believes that the proposal will keep CISD competitive with peer school districts in the Houston area. Under this plan, the starting teacher salary is $48,700. Existing teachers receive a salary increase of $1,840 next year, and teacher salary increase, <coughs> teacher salaries will increase approximately $6,460,000. This represents a 3.5% general pay increase on the midpoint for teacher salaries. I recommend that you approve it. All right, so move. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or comments? I actually do have a comment or suggestion. I would like to see our paraprofessional pay increase by 4%, uh, just a little bit more than the teacher percentage. We're actually uh, looking at that now and uh, uh, plan to bring back a recommendation when we bring the proposal for our budget uh, with that included in it. So. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Powell. Thank you. Appreciate. No, the parents will appreciate that, too. I think they were All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other Absolutely. discussion or comments? All right, all those in favor? And the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, right. Thank you Mr. Uh, and now, 6B financial reports, Dr. Stockton. Mr. Rice, will you please present that item? Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. I'm here tonight to present the financial statements for the district for the month of March. Uh, these statements will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. Uh, the first uh, statement we're looking at here is our balance sheet. It shows our assets, liabilities, and fund balances for the district. Always like to look at our cash and our investments. As you can see where our funds are in the general fund, if we concentrate there, we have a uh, a little over 100 million invested in the Capital One Now account, 100% collateralized with them. 154 million with the with the pooled funds. 425,000 in the bank and 500 dollars cash on hand. <coughs> the next statement, our income statement, shows our revenues and expenditures for each one of the same funds. Always like to look at our local revenues. Uh, the largest uh, revenue generator for our general fund is our property taxes. That's the same with our debt service fund. Food service, it's food sales, and self-funded, it's premium contributions. We always like to know where we're projecting our fund balance. We're currently projecting a fund balance in the general fund to increase close to $7 million. And also, we just have a little bit of detail. Like, y'all get this in your board packet, but I'll just kind of show you, show you this, how we come up with those projections. We're projecting our revenues, about $408 million. Expenditures, $368 million. That provides us with the funds to 
at the end of the year, transfer the $16 million to uh, debt service and then also the $17 million to the capital projects fund to fund the Oak Ridge High project. And then after those transfers, we'll still have close to $7 million left in the fund balance increase. Debt service fund, no change in this projection uh, from last month, about $4.2 million decrease. Child nutrition fund balance decrease staying the same, about $1.5 million. Self-funded insurance, once again, another good report uh, for the month of March. Uh, but if we look at the total for the year, we've had $19.2 million worth of revenues, $18.7 million worth of uh, expenditures. We're roughly $500,000 to the good this year in our, in our plan. Good job. And then if we look at our wellness centers, the participation in the uh, Oak Ridge Center, a little over 3,500 there so far this year. At the Conroe Center, 586. Total participation for the year, 4,100. Uh, but if we look at the Conroe Center this past March, you see it's ticked up a little bit, 110. They've opened up that new center, open all week. So I think we're going <coughs> to see that number grow as we move forward. So uh, good report there. Our uh, $109 million bond transition plan, we've currently uh, expended and encumbered $27 million of that. Uh, we're estimating about $77 million to complete, uh, giving us a projected for forecast of $104 million. Uh, contingency remaining of about uh, $4.7 million. Um, and then also of our $527 million bond program, we've currently sold $487 million of that, leaving us with $40 million to sell. Our investments, at the end of February, we had invested $384 million. At the end of March, $371 million. Weighted average maturity in the pools is 66 days. Yield the maturity of our portfolio, 0.161. Our benchmark, the 90-day T-bill, three and a half basis points. And uh, just wanted to remind everybody, today is tax day. <laughs> we pay our taxes. <laughs> Got some new pictures there. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, you can see. Wait all day. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was looking for the blind dog. All right. No one had any tomatoes or anything for you. That's good. All right. Item 7A is executive session. Closed session of the board will now be held on matters contained in the notice for this meeting as authorized by section 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be at either A, this public meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, upon the reconvening of this public meeting or B, at a subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof as the board shall determine. A closed session of the board will now be held. The time is 6.55. All right. You ready? Yep. All right. The board is now in open session at 7.25 p.m. The next item on the agenda is 10A legal appointment of audit committee member to replace Ms. C.J. Haynes. And I have asked, and he has accepted, Dr. Mel Brown will make that replacement. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. No, they told me to come keep an eye on you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that would be too <laughs> All right. And then item 10 to C, but I guess it's B, isn't it? Consider appointment to Board of Trustee Position 3. Uh, I move we leave it vacant. Second. We have a motion and a second to leave the position vacant. Is there any discussion? Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? And the motion carries. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a second. All those in favor? This wasn't anybody else arguing. All right. Thank you. Y'all have a great evening. Hey, Thank you. One, one, seven, one, 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 one,